Hello there, and welcome to Cooking with John Elliston. I'm John Elliston, and today we're going to show you how to make elder beef that was once eaten by the executioner of the fountain of Galchloch. Now, you want to start by just preparing yourself for what lies ahead in this by reading the ingredients below, and then once you've done the ingredients below, we can get started right away. Now, we want to begin by heating up about a tablespoon of pure sunflower oil into a non-stick pan. So, high heat to start to get the oil nice and glazed. Now, what we can do at this point is just discuss exactly what this food means to me. You know, I was brought up eating elder beef, uh, like, every Saturday and perhaps on a Sunday because there would still be quite a bit left. Uh, so, we'll, we'll keep talking about that as the, as the process goes. Now you want to make sure that your sausages are just pure heavy golden brown with just a, a little touch of pink, just enough pink to know that it's pork and it's no beef sausages that you're using, just nice and glazed. Now, once you're satisfied with the presentation of the sausages, if it's got that brown tear, then that's the, that's the sausages pretty much ready on, once I've brown, you know, once I've got brown, you know what I mean? Now you want to transfer the sausages into a casserole dish until they just splodge down at the bottom and just leave them there. So what you now want to do once you put the sausages into the casserole dish is you want to add your bacon. Now people usually use just normal streaky bacon for this, but I go up to the hills of uh, Clydeen and I get mine specifically from a wee merchant in this wee village uh, just up the road off Kinkwoko, uh, just past Lock Slurry. Cooking's just something that I've always wanted to do. Just gets me energetic and just heavy. Just makes me feel alive and just makes me pure want to go party. Just makes me want to taste the colours and that, you know what I mean? Just, it's, it's good. It's good for me. It's, it's really, really good for me. It's a passion, really. No, it's a, it's a passion, Melanette now. So we're going to move on now to the frying of the onion process. You want to cook the onions until you just get a nice glade after them, until they're just a wee bit shiny, just a wee bit of glade. So, when I was a bell, you know, this is just, this is just what I ate, this is, this is what I was born with. And fucking, my mum used to make elder beef every Saturday before we went to Chattel. Now, once the onions have got that glade on them, and they're just nice and fucking glade, usually you'd put in garlic now. I don't use garlic, no, I use an ingredient that a lot of people are not actually that familiar with. But it's in the same kind of family tree as it was of garlic. And it's known as um, colger bean, uh, which is a kind of close relative to garlic. And it's just a wee bit more fucking, just a wee bit more potent, you know what I mean? Just gives you that, oh, the back of your neck, you know what I mean? Now we're going to be adding the chicken stock soon into the onions in the uh, the elder bean. Uh, so the chicken stock is just one of those ones, just like that, stick it in. Now when you've got the onions and the garlic, uh, this time when you're satisfied with the glade, then uh, you can add some uh, chilli powder uh, or smoked paprika. So on this occasion I'm going to add um, a little bit of chilli powder and we'll just see what happens. So it's about 300 milligrams of chicken stock in with the onions. One full can of chopped tomatoes. tablespoon of fucking tomato puree and a tablespoon of Worcester sauce. Now once you've added the stock, the tomatoes, the herbs, the fucking Worcester sauce, you want to cook it for about 25 centigrade. Now you can't go any higher or any lower, otherwise it will just lose that benticity. Sizzle! 
Simmer all the ingredients, stirring occasionally until you are 100% satisfied that it's got just the right amount of grade. Now, if I do say so myself, that is absolutely fucking dynamite. mate. Now, once you've brought this to a simmer, you want to put it into the casserole dish with the bacon and the sausage, and then you want to bring that to the simmer, and you leave that for about 20 minutes, stirring occasionally. Aye, so I've been cooking for a good few years now, you know, it's a stress release. You know, it's a stress release more than anything. Kinda gets me going, you know, I like to write recipes and, and read the recipes, you know, I, I know all the, I know all the chefs. So once you're satisfied with the simmering for the casserole dish, once you've got that a nice wee simmer, you want to add the lid, but you don't want to completely cover the casserole dish. Now once you've got everything in the casserole dish simmering nicely, after 20 minutes you want to add the beans and you want to drain the beans then you add them into the casserole dish for an additional 10 minutes now just a useful tip here any other recipe commands that you use butter beans but i don't use butter beans i prefer to use viper beans and i pick them myself all right for the fucking trees i'm out blow now once you've added the beans that's been in for an additional 10 minutes, that's it fucking done now. So you can serve it with rice or you can have it with rustic bread. I've been John Elliston and you've been fucking great. Now join me next week when we'll be cooking fucking carrot cabbage out of nothing. Now if you've enjoyed my cooking programme today, you can subscribe to my channel John Erliston and uh, we'll uh, be bringing new recipes every weekend uh, for your lifetime and at no extra cost.